Well, if you found yourself here watching episode three without seeing episode one and two, then I strongly suggest heading over, catching them videos first so that you haven't missed any of the action unfold so far. Previously, how about this for a spot then? Absolutely mega. Oh, we found the mother load. Tons of them here. Huge, huge lips on this one. And uh, yeah, 43 pounds. Yes! Yes! Oh, I'm shitting myself. Ah. Oh, God. Oh, Just shit. lost my boat. Look, it's out there. It's got all my kit on it. Got one. Yes, I've got one. 95. What? 97. We actually saved a woman from drowning. <laughs> Holes disappeared. Oh no, Lee, you absolute monkey clown. Got the van started, the van was dead. One of them looks like a 40 pounder at the very least. Tigers. Oh. Go in the rainbow. That's the security guard saying that we are not allowed to fish here. I am police officer. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. Great. So much for rolling the dice on a good one. Back on the road once again. With morale at its lowest point right now, we needed something special to turn this trip round. Welcome to the French Alps. Right then, right then. So we walked around the pond. Didn't take very long because it's a small pond. Where I saw that 40 pounder, sort of down that little finger arm, is sort of this swims water as such. So basically, I've got a reed line margin opposite with that beautiful <laughs> mountain in the background. So we've got that reed line there, and that's the dog leg just there it is we sort of come out and went along that reed line there so yeah I've gone in here although that's the only one that I did see and uh, I think I'm probably gonna fish two sort of against that reed line at the back there and maybe one out here there's like a bit of a weed bed just out there and uh, it's almost to the surface it's very clear and weedy. It reminds me a lot of when I used to fish Nutsy, to be fair. It's that similar sort of feel to it, other than you've got the, the Alps in the background, which is pretty cool. So, wind pumping down here. Scenery's beautiful. Freezing cold beer. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Three rods ready to rock and roll then. But I'm actually gonna go in with hemp and tigers on this reed line. I've got two on that. So I've got one on a single tiger and another on a double tiger, which have both been skinned on the very top of them, which makes them bright white. Basically gives you a bright one over the top of the hemp and tigers that I'm gonna put out there. And I'm actually gonna walk round to that reed line got me 13 foot rod in hand with a light lead on it and I've got a little grappling lead as well I'm just gonna double check that just in front of them reeds it's nice and clear what I'm gonna do is put my halo pole in I'm just gonna put the pole into the reeds and then that give me a reference point for where I actually put the bait boat sort of thing so I'm gonna go around do all the leg work now make sure the spots clear and everything mark it with a halo pole on the far bank, come back round, and then bait boat out there with me Emp and Tigers and drop it just in front of the pole or use the pole as a, as a marker as such. So that's the plan, Stan. I'm gonna use a little light lead at first just to have a little donk around, 13 foot rod so I can get, you know, right down the edge with a big rod and then 
use the grappling lead as well and just pull that through and just double check that there's no weed about. Yeah, ideal. Just in front of that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit more of a glowing spot there. So that is me two margin rods. Sort it. Sweet. All right. Get the bloody hell out of here. Look, more beaver, beaver action. Look, can you see that? Beaver action. We get picked up by a beaver tonight. You watch. There's always hope. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Let's hope they're the ones, them spots. Let's go back and get some rods dropped. Hopefully that little bit of effort, you know, makes a difference a little bit, you know. Let's get out of here. Get my bloody trainers back on. They should do Air Max waders, really. I might wear them a bit more, like hang about in them all day. They're Air Max ones, definitely. Ow, 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 he hurt me. Yeah, Sean has got um, Air Max waders, please. In that design, the old snakeskin design. Do you know what? They're like a proper rare Air Max 90s, them, and I've absolutely rinsed them this trip. You won't see many of them about. There you go, Nike, there's a shot for you. Send me more Nikes, look. Always on the ponds. Oh, shit. Div. all the rods out i've got one down here so my bivvy's just there obviously and i've got a single rod out here which is proper fished french style loads of bug in the boat loads of switch in the boat as well 18 millers few 22 mil bugs and that's fished on the old bollocks rig out there it sort of goes out two foot two foot drops down into 5.7 foot then comes back up to two foot, so a bit of a trough out in front there. That one's done. The other three rods, they're all sorted as well. Oh, you have to bear with me, I'm absolutely battered. It's been a long day. I didn't get much sleep last night, sat beside that bloody road, let me tell you. I think I've got about two, maybe three hours. So, um, so yeah, three rods, they're all sorted with that beautiful view in the background there. One middle rod's on the halo pole, so middle rod's out there on the halo. That one, the other halo's around there. And then just out sort of where that coot is, but he's actually sat on top of a weed bed there. I'm this side of that weed bed in four foot of water. Today's gonna be a case of having some food and going to bloody bed in the hope that I get a good night's kip and get woken up at about 6 a.m. Be nice. got one i've got the one that i was hoping for a public lake 40 pounder and what a place for it to happen oh right at the death as well sort of thing you know we're into the last part of the trip now and yeah we've stumbled across a little piece of heaven for sure oh i'm over the moon <clears throat> i'm absolutely ecstatic oh i can't believe it yes Oh, well, 
how about this for an absolute result after all of the ag we've had on this trip. Oh, it don't get much better than that, does it? What an absolute beast. Oh, 41 pounds, eight ounces of incredible common with the Alps in the background. Life don't get much better than that. This is the one we were waiting for and it's finally happened with this immense beast. What a fish. Yes! Just put that common back, managed to get this all working with the box, which is ideal because the echo was cutting out as soon as you get near your spot. I think I've sorted it, which is ideal. So, yep, yeah, there's the rig that did the do. Oh, Cortex mat, 35 pound that is. Lovely tiger there, found a big old tiger in my little monster jar. And yeah, it's just a case of loading the boat and sending him back out of that spot tree so let the old echo tell us what's what yeah oh, absolutely elated with that big carp unbelievable yeah shallow pond this like where that boat is halfway across the lake there's two and a half foot there that's reading three foot four foot three foot you know the average depth is probably three foot good we're ready for another day rod has just busted off oh god I put the back wind on come get me gopro bloody hell there's a grebe right there on, it's right next to the line div do you see i'm playing a fish grebe so yeah middle ones are busted off ripped it no no oh i thought you'd come off then oh god concentrate me Weed it just sort of pings up out of the weed and then you just get a load of bloody line back. Oh, horrible that was. It's not so nice. But yeah, tension being a bit relentless today on the boily rods. It seems to all be about the monster tigers and that splattering of hemp as well. Oh, yeah, they're certainly loving that zone over there. The wind did switch round and was going to our left but it's since turned round the last couple of hours it seems like whatever went that way so we're showing quite long out the back here I've hopefully come back this way so he's just weeded himself up slightly he's still moving though still moving I'm just gonna keep trotting back it's literally just about to phone the missus and she busted off 
you'll have to wait, babe. Sorry. Story of my life. <laughs> Look at that for a view. <laughs> I know I keep bloody saying it, but I can't help myself. I'm sorry. No. really do your help man I can't net this cod oh please it's right on the bottom look I can't This is not ideal. Oh, fucking hell. Oh man, I'm gonna lose this car. Mate. Oh, please, please, yes, yes. Oh, that was a calamity. Proper. Here's the result of that vicious bite on the middle rod. Absolute lovely one, I'm sure you would all agree. 24 pounder on the Monster Tiger and a dashing of hemp put in the boat and put over onto that reed line. Absolutely awesome he is. Fingers crossed there's plenty more of these to come. I'm enjoying this at the moment for sure. We'll pop you back in your gin clear home. Here comes the pooch. Who's that dog? Who's he? <laughs> yeah. Wicked. Result of that bite, all 22 pounds of him. Awesome, getting plenty of bites now on these rods. Which I'm absolutely buzzing about. Well worth the effort of going around and putting them halo poles in. Right, I'll send you on your way, mate. Thank you very much. That middle rod's away. Wow! I thought that one had been wiped out. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Great. 
There we go. He's in. Sorted. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> he's gone. Oh no, he's gone. I lost him. <laughs> oh no. Oh, what a div. I hooked him and he went. Savage, I didn't even get to see him. I didn't know if he was scaly or what. He was just plain one, wasn't he? I mean, <laughs> what a clown. Oh dear. Well, there, there, there was a carp there, I promise. <coughs> just might not have seen him. I'm gonna have to drop in right hander. He's busted off. He's busted off. Play him to the side. Like so. Just so he stays away from that other rod. No. No. And just lift that other rod for us, Nick, could you? I don't want him to bloody wipe that one out because we've not got a lot of boat battery. Let me come under you, mate. Oh. oh, and now he's going back the other way, isn't he? I couldn't have pulled him any further away from that rod. I can wipe both rods out. Oh, man, I'm reading the other rod in, and I threw... Second biggest mirror so far, I think. Is it? Yeah, no. 30 pounder, isn't it? Yeah, plump one, isn't he? Another one filled up. Ah, 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 ah! Fuck, 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 fuck! Oh, mate, I'm fucked. Fuck, fuck. Get a pair of scissors, cut it. Oh, shit. Quick, here. quick. In my tackle box, there's some pliers. <laughs> quick, Nick. <sighs> Alright, grab hold of that, grab hold of that hook and just f***ing yank it. No, 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 no. Alright. sake fucking thing right. <laughs> grab hold of that oh, come on all right and don't fuck about just shank it go oh, fuck. Oh. well good morning Another lazy morning for me. Tunes are on though, tunes are on, get me going, get me going. Yeah, a few calamities last night, definitely. Not ideal, finger is throbbing. But yeah, I had a couple of small ones last night and this morning had a small one. I've only got one rod out, which I don't even think's fishing. The tufties have been all over it. So yeah, a bit, bit of lazy fishing on my front at the minute, which isn't good, isn't good. So it's a big regroup at the minute, get all the rods sorted, ready to rock and roll for today's antics. Hopefully we can get another big one today. That would be lovely jubbly, fingers crossed. So yeah, let's get on with the job and get these rods all sorted. <laughs> Yeah, this was the fourth rod that's in here. Put a shed load of bug in there with a 
bollocks rig on. And yeah, it's been um, picked up. Looks still sharp. Oh, I'm getting a new update on that. I'll get that back out there. Yeah, so same old, same old. 60 pound fluoro in between them two 18 millers. Size 11, ring swivel. And then yeah, it's just fish multi-rig style through the large ring. Over the hook. Over the hook, pull him down, track it off with your little tungsten kicker. Ready to rumble, and he sits obviously with a hook lying flat and then just wafting over the top, I'd say. That'll be a bite then. Oh. Oh, right, well, sun's dying. Well, it's not dying, but it's uh, been a while since I re-put this rod out. This one has ramped off. Weed on the line there, look. Hopefully it falls off at the rod tip. That would be nice. How on the big one? Some of it's falling off. Getting past that larger weed bed. Nicky, Nick, could you net this fish for me? I can't bloody get him up. I've, I've ran out of line. I can't bloody net it like the willow fluff has um, got round the wasne. Sorted. Cheers, my dears. Yeah, look, I can't bloody reel anymore. Look, bloody willow fluff has done me. <laughs> Is the result of that epic fight in front of the mountain. All 25 pounds of him. Lovely jubbies. I think is the biggest mirror I've had from the pond so far, which is ideal over all of that bug and the switch combo that we put out earlier on on that back rod. And yeah, that is doing the do at the minute. The weather's on the turn at the moment. The weather app's telling us that we've got storm coming, so. Right, we better slip in back before storm comes. I need a bath, so I'm gonna to have to have one in the lake. In the meantime, I'm gonna admire him for a couple more seconds, get some photos and send him on his way.
shit in my way. Oh, middle rod's busted off again. The shrubbing's run out. Boy. Oh. I think this might be a better one, you. I think that's a good one, mate. God. Oh, stop. Please stop. Oh, no. Oh, mate. Mate, the vortex that's just come up out. Oh my god. Proper massive vortex just come up. I'll wipe this other rod out. I need Nick, I need you to lift that other rod, mate. The, the weeds gathered all around him. <coughs> yep. Should hopefully be able to ping that weed out. That's it, mate. It sound. Just chuck him to one side. Oh God, my heart's going, 10 to the dozen it. Oh, look at that fizzer, Nick. Mate, that's a big one. This is a big one. It's gotta be. Please, please, please. Oh my God, it's a big common, isn't it? Oh, mate. Where's that there? Oh. Get in there! Yes! Oh, man! Oh, God! Oh, yeah, man! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, mate, that's a charm! Yeah, nice! Yeah, love that. Oh, buzzing, yes! That's an old one. Proper. Oh, yes! Look at him. Yeah, man. Oh, get in, we needed that. Just in the side. Chops. Oh, yes. Oh, buzzing. Oh, yes. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He's old weathered thin. Oh, he's bloody awesome. Oh. I think you're falling off, didn't you? Falling off, I don't do. That will do. Cool. Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 How about this for a mountain beast? Oh, 44 pounds, eight ounces of him. What an incredible carp. Absolutely blown away by this place. Incredible scenery, as I've mentioned so many times, but incredible creatures like this one in my hands at the minute. I am absolutely elated. We're losing the light rapidly, as you could probably tell. So. I'm gonna get a couple of snaps and send him back to his beautiful home. But what an absolute beast. Yes! <laughs> God, the light couldn't be fading any quicker at the minute. Savage, but oh, absolutely buzzing all the same. 
is a look at the other side. Just this magnificent. That's the other. Wow. What a beast. What a serious public lake, mountain carp. Mega. Wah. Oh, that is what it's all about. Beached himself, he's that big. <laughs> that way, me. That way. Oh. Giant. Yeah. Yes. Buzzing. Well, just finished a lovely chicken, which was like the biggest chicken in the world, wasn't it? It was like meat. <laughs> it was like, like literally like we had two legs each and it um it just went on forever. Amazing. Right, this is the beer that JB gave us at the start of the trip, which I think is now worthy of opening. Definitely, I'd have opened it with the first one to be fair, but forgot about it and just found him in the bottom of the cool bag. So this is the Pierre Anoisistan of beers. I think that's what you said. Cool. The Don Perion of beers. Anoisistan of beers. I think that's what you said. Cool. So a smell. Oh yeah, it smells bloody gorgeous. Cheers, JB. You absolute bloody legend. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh, don't want it to end. That is one absolute gorgeous beer. What is it? Orville Trappist Ale. Doesn't even taste like ale. Oh. Oh my God, that is amazing. Sex in a bottle, that. <laughs> oh, what a buzz. Right, got to get these bloody get these rods back out now and uh, see what the rest of the night brings. God, absolutely buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Yeah. Good morning. It's the morning we like to see in it. Well, the morning started off well, and then bloody fish fell off. Gutted, absolutely gutted by that. Um, the rods were bleeping all night last night. It's just a bloody nightmare, and um, it's the koi pew. He's swimming up and down here like a bloody whatever swims up and down a lot. Fish, I suppose. <laughs> and yeah, just making the rods bleep all bloody night. I've gutted that rod out the back there that dropped in that proper carpy little hole. You know, gutted that one didn't go. So like, I, I reckon I've got maybe two more drops worth of tigers left. Still got a fair few boilies sort of thing. I've probably st still got about 30 kilo of boilies, which could be easily used up, obviously, if it gets a bit hectic today, but Today's the last full day of this adventure and I can't believe it's gone so quickly, to be honest. I'm basically gonna sort out the whole lot of my kit and lay it all out. The boat needs washing, the boat sat there behind me and then just have a quick run through of absolutely everything that I've used these past few weeks and, uh, and yeah, give you a little insight of you know, what's been good, what hasn't been good, what's, um, you know, and all, all the all the stuff that's been used and abused for three weeks whilst out on one of these adventures. So that maybe if you guys are out on an adventure yourselves, 
you know, the, uh, you'll have a, a general idea of sort of the kit that is needed for it sort of thing. So, right, get all the rods sorted, ready to rock and roll for today's antics. Hopefully we can get another big one today. That would be lovely jubbly, fingers crossed. Right, well, back rod has just busted off. I'm still in the middle of cleaning the boat up there at the minute. Yeah, this one weeded himself up straight away. Big old eruption, big fizzer out there. I can still semi feel him on the end, whatever that means. He's up on the surface there. I don't want him to go that way. I need to go back this way. Let's always pull them the way that they are heading and you can normally guide them back a bit like what he's doing now which is ideal try and avoid that weed there though yeah he does look a better one yeah he looks wicked doesn't he oh he's just picked that weed up Yeah, man. He looks awesome. Cool. Yeah, look at that. He's a better one, isn't he? Oh, why is my neck like that? Cool. Yeah. He is lovely. We want you in the net. Come on, stop fighting then. Don't go out there. Don't go out there. Please don't go out there. Please. Please. No. 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 Oh, you dirty animal. God. He sort of swam in between the two weed beds there. <laughs> Did you see that? He knew where he was going. God. I hate it when you get them so close. Oh, look at this snake coming here. Look. See him? Grab that net. <laughs> Got that? Look, he's dived under the water, look. God, I ain't getting in the water now for this. He's <laughs> gone under the bloody net. Concentrate, Lee, you've got cod on. 
staring at bloody snakes like Attenborough. See it? Come off, fuck you. Well, it's been a few hours now since the loss of that capture earlier on, which is still oh, just grating away at me. Really bloody hurts, doesn't it? Doesn't matter how many you lose, they all, all hurt. And I'm trying to come up with some way of a comparison as to the pain you feel of losing a carp. And I can only bring it down to probably childbirth. Probably as paint now, I'm, I'm joking. Obviously, it's a bit more extreme than childbirth. Losing a carp is way worse, definitely. I'm only joking, women, before you start screaming at the bloody TV. Anyway, all the kit's laid out behind me. Now it's all washed, cleaned, and perhaps ready for the next adventure, who knows? But this adventure is now coming to an end. So I thought I'd just run through it briefly of everything I've used for the past three weeks whilst being out on these public water adventures. So kickstarting things off, that's the boat, 320 boat. I've actually got the air deck, which is here, which I busted, unfortunately. Whilst I was on one of the big pits, yeah, I busted it on the side, but you get a puncture repair kit with every boat that you get. And yeah, that had a uh, repair done to it today. So that's the air deck there. Now, an air deck over the old aluminium deck. So you get a choice of the both. Would you have the air deck or the aluminium deck in there? Issues with the air deck is if it rains, all of the water sits underneath it. And if you chuck bait in and what have you, it ends up down in the crevices and ends up behind the air deck which may be one of the reasons why it got burst is a mouse might have got in there and chewed the side. Now with an air deck, obviously, you can use that as a bit of a carp mat, but it's black and it gets very, very hot inside the boat. So you'd have to douse it in water if you wanted to put a fish in there, but it would be more than safe having a fish inside the boat using that air deck, definitely. But I think if I had the choice now, I'd probably go with the aluminium deck due to the fact that you could scoop the water out i don't think the water sits underneath the aluminium deck it's a lot more thinner than what this air deck is obviously this air deck is a fair few inches and most of us geezers you know a few inches makes all the difference especially when you're loading the boat <laughs> so yeah i think i think if i had the choice now i'd probably end up with the aluminium deck rather than the air deck obviously rods wise i've had the brand new explorer ti's they've been absolutely brilliant i have had a set of 13 foot x 5 s's with me just because of the fact that i thought if they weren't manly enough for some of these big waters then at least i've got my 13 footers which is a rod that i tend to use out at rainbow but to be honest them them ti's have been brilliant i've had uh, uh, there's i've got two sets of three pounds and two sets of three and a quarters i believe and i haven't really noticed the difference in any of them whether one's a little bit more powerful than the other they've all been you know on a similar wavelength but they've been bloody brilliant they have they have been really really good rods now bed wise 
that is the flat liner. So eight legged flat liner there. That is a boat that I tend to use for a boat. Bloody hell, sorry. That is a bed that I tend to use for most of my trips abroad. I've, I've had that since we brought them out. So I've had that many years. Now I know I'm six foot streak of piss, but in all fairness, that is more comfy than my very expensive bed that's at home, in a, to be honest with you. Whether it's because I spend more time on that bed than I do at the one at home is another matter maybe. But if you're looking for a bed to go abroad with and sleep, very happily on then the flat liner i've got free season bag on that free season bag on on the flat liner i've got a couple of pillows which are inside the van at the moment been absolutely lovely i've had it many many years this bed now bivy wise so what i've had is the frontier xd which has been absolutely outstanding you know we've had to set up in some of the meadows that we've had to set up on you've had spiders and on here we've had loads of snakes frogs ants flies bugs everything you could possibly imagine um, especially at night the, the mosquitoes have been absolutely savage and because you've got that inner dome inside that bivy you can keep all of them creepy crawlies out keep everything out of the bivy so again that you can just sleep easy whilst you're out on these sort of adventures now all of this kit that you see laid out here all of this is obviously everything that I've brought with me and that all fits in that 320 boat. Now, I've got the XL cart mat. You can use that as a bit of a tow boat, which I have done. Obviously, it's an air boat, an air, boat and an air mat that you get a blow up foot pump with. See, I'm doing the foot motions and what have you. Great thing about this as well is that you get obviously that foam mat inside it and you can put all your bits and bobs so like your water bucket and what have you that can squeeze down in the bottom of the mat chuck that part of it in there and it all sort of lives inside there perfectly so it all sits inside there so you've all got it in at one place and it's a great tow boat you know just for all them little extra bits especially for the amount of kit that i've got here so what else have we got? So this is uh, an IC Tech call box that we've had and that has been living in the van and what we've done is we've gone to the supermarket, filled it up with as much ice as possible, kept our food in there, kept it shut for a week and then opened it back up and our food's been as fresh as it possibly can be whilst out in this 30 degree heat. Um, bait boat, RT4, see me use that, good bit of kit. I've had a couple of issues with the blood. I'm not going to lie. I've had a couple of issues with the bloody echo cutting in and out. I think my box needs updating or something or other. I've had a few issues with that in all fairness, but the boat itself has been absolutely brilliant. It caught me plenty of fish whilst on this adventure. So that there is the boat pump. Absolute vital bit of kit. That's what's been blowing up the boats. You can set the PSI and the bar on that. Your PSI and bar is on the boat itself so if you buy a fox boat it will tell you exactly what psi or bar that you need to have on the valves not only that we've got safety valves on these boats as well especially when you're out in this blistering sunshine you know the boats do get a lot of heat on them and then you've got these safety valves here to make sure that your boat doesn't explode so a great another addition for them boats there We've got an Aquos bag here that's got all my waterproof stuff in, so that's obviously got life jacket, I've got a spare life jacket, I've got five waders in there, normal waders and all my waterproof kit in a 30 litre Aquos bag. This is my 20 litre Aquos bag, this one has all my brew kit in it, so that's going to stay out with me tonight. I've got my leads pouch, this lives in the boat with me normally or outside the bivvy. It's got all my 6 ounce leads, my 12 ounce leads, my backing leads there the old uh, captive backing leads spare set of scissors old line bite is in there and a spare receiver the receiver stays in here 
so that when I'm out in the boat and what have you, I can always know if I'm wiping a rod out or I'm getting a bite whilst I'm out in the boat having a second receiver. I know it's a bit tight and all you go, oh, it's all right for you getting all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, having a second receiver is bloody godsend, definitely. And I'll tell you what I do with the other receiver in a minute whilst we run through everything else. So bivy table we've spoken about ridge monkey toilet absolute bloody must on all of these they are a quality bit of kit especially with the old toilet bags as well game changer absolutely awesome great bit of kit well done boys for designing something like that aquascope self-explanatory diving kit so this is the stuff that i've been using whilst following the fish out and did a bit of swimming yesterday this one you can get a gopro bracket on the top 20 quid ebay jobby it's meant to you see in the top there so if you go underwater that ball that's there is meant to stop the water going into the breathing chamber it doesn't it ends up in water and there you end up choking it's not ideal um sti xl sling been a great bit of kit i've had that god knows how many years still not busted it yet which is a su very surprising for myself rod bag i've got the voyager 13 foot rod bag now i've got my 13 foot rods in that bag as well as all four of the ti explorers they go in there all set up and then i've got the 13 footers in there as well which aren't set up so you know i've, I've in, in effect, I've got eight rods inside there. Four of them are set up, four of them aren't. We've got the normal carry -all bag in here. These are all my bits that I've been using. Snag leader, I put that on three weeks ago and I haven't had to change it. That is an awesome, awesome bit of kit. You may notice that I've been using the black nickel hooks on this trip. I've found I may get into trouble here for this, but I have found that with their black nickel hooks, I don't know what it is about coming out into France and using the PTFE coated ones, the normal grey grey coloured hooks, they seem to go blum quickly. And I've found that whenever going out in France that they always end up going blum really quick. So I thought I'd bring some of these car hooks out because I had tons of them from a uh, product shoot that we did so I brought a load of them out with me they've been brilliant they have I've had three four fish on some of them hooks and they've still been absolutely razor sharp hook bait wise obviously switch wafters I've used quite a bit especially on the bollocks rig and the bug wafters as well again on the bollocks rig got a little tub there of tigers so this is all the power that I've had whilst running the cameras got three of the big uh what are they 96 yeah 96k power packs they're all dead done all them with the cameras this has been an amazing bit of kit so this is the 150 ah lounge box so i've run my boat off of that and as you'll notice at the minute i'm actually charging my bait boat batteries off of it as well that has been a bloody awesome bit of kit great great battery if you're looking to do a big trip um that will last you definitely and i'll come on to more about that when i move on to the engines laney's given me this this is a power pack of laney's um that was given to him and he wanted me to use it because he hadn't used it on a big adventure yet and again that's been a great bit of kit so we've got two ridge monkey packs there everything's dead so i'm glad that i've had all of that i've got a little bit of power left in one of them ridge monkeys to charge my phone and maybe run my gopro for tonight's time lapse just about maybe maybe so i've got a easy shelter there that's one of the old pop-up ones that actually sits inside your bed quite nicely i've brought that out here with me so that i could use my fridge uh perhaps on one of the bigger lakes but i never needed to actually use the fridge 60 inch brolly there use that on the river a lot use that for a couple of nights whilst we're you know sheltered up uh, in a car park and what have you fox halo marker pole kits got two sets of them so that's uh there's two sets in there two sets in there got a few spare weights there and what have you they're obviously out in the pond at the moment on the reeds uh, a couple of carp sacks got me 10 foot donkey rod that's a scoop 
for the boat which isn't ideal when you've got an air deck because you can't get near the water and then inside there i've got my fox h block for marking my spots my echo sounder's in there the old low ranch echo sounder got me cob there water butt this chair absolutely great for all these adventures sort of thing i know it's a little bit of a low lying chair but the way it collapses up like so just push it up you know that sits inside the boat absolutely beautifully and then we move on to the camera equipment so bearing in mind all of this does go inside that bloody boat would you believe um yeah i've got my drone which i haven't managed to use a lot this trip due to the winds have been absolutely savage uh that's my camera bag there as well that's got all my camera equipment in uh tripods got three tripods as well as two gopros one that i've got in my hand at the moment and another gopro that's down here that's always watching the rods trying to capture um any bites and then at the minute i've got a little bit of power left in this 48k power pack so that's going to run that camera for the rest of the night and there's my next receiver which is next to this camera so that that picks up the noise from them alarms now when fishing braid i don't like having noise on the alarms when using braid i just feel like that noise transfers through the braid out into the water and may just spook the area a little bit more especially if you're getting as many bloody bleeps as what we get here so i have the alarm silent and then have the receivers up quite loud so hence having the two receivers one in the boat one in my bivy or next to that camera and then um obviously if i'm out in the boat and i get a bite i'll know about it if i'm on the bank i'll get a bite and i know about it sort of thing so yeah it's a bit tarty i know having a couple of receivers but needs must and all that and that is about it and breathe and reminisce and yeah it's all coming to an end now in a blink of a bloody eye Absolute mountain leviathan. Yes! All 48 pounds of her. What a magnificent creature. All the art ate this trip, Dad. With everything that's gone on and finding all of them males on all of them venues that we've been on to have finally caught myself this female, which is obviously still full up, absolutely over the moon. The bug doing a do once again. What a fish and what a place. Oh, truly, truly blown away with that. Yes! Wow. Oh, you absolute animal. Oh, you have made my life. You really have. Oh, wow. action.